Unit 5 Civic Consciousness Lesson 1 The Federal Legislature Legislature is one of the most important organs of the state. It formulates necessary laws for governing a state. In the Constitution of Nepal, there is provision of federal parliament consisting of House of Representatives and the National Assembly. In our country, Nepal, federal legislature is also called federal parliament. The House of Representatives shall consist of 165 members through first past the post directly elected electoral system and 110 members through proportional electoral system. Including both, it consists of total 275 members in legislature. The tenure of the House of Representatives is five years. The National Assembly is a permanent house comprising 59 members. It consists of 8 members from each state and 3 members to be nominated on the recommendation of Government of Nepal. There should be more than one-third of women's representation in the National Assembly. The tenure of the members of the National Assembly shall be 6 years and one-third members' tenure shall be over in every 2 years. Qualification to be a candidate of federal parliament is Citizen of Nepal 25 years of age for the House of Representatives and 35 years of age for the National Assembly Not punished for any criminal offense involving moral turpitude Not ineligible under any federal law Not holding any official and beneficiary post the House of Representatives shall have Speaker and Deputy Speaker, whereas the National Assembly shall have the provision of Chairperson and Vice Chairperson. While electing candidates in both posts of both houses, there must be representation of different gender and different political party. There is certain system to introduce, approve and pass the bill in the federal parliament. Any bill can be tabled in any house of parliament but finance bill is only introduced in the house of representatives. When the bill is approved by one house that should immediately be sent to the next house. If the bill is passed by receiving house, it shall be presented to the president for assent. Before presenting the bill to the president, the speaker or the chairperson should approve it. The president shall certify the bill and send back to both House of Parliament within 15 days from the date of receipt of the bill. In the Constitution of Nepal, there is provision of provincial legislature. In every provincial legislature, 60% of members shall be elected through first past the post election system and 40% shall be elected through proportional representation system. The legislature makes necessary laws for the province. Functions of the legislature or parliament. Formation of law. The legislature plays prime role to make law according to the sentiment of the people on behalf of people's representatives. The bill presented in the legislature is discussed and according to the need it is modified. When the majority of the members of parliament approve, the head of the state, president, certifies to make it a law. Based on needs of the nation, changing, modifying and making new laws are the prime functions of legislature. Administrative function the head of the executive is selected by the members of parliament. The executive remains in power till it gets support from majority members of parliament. The members of parliament ask questions, criticize and put forward some proposals so as to gain control over the executive. The parliament also has the right to put forward vote of no confidence against the executive. Functions related to financial control. Financial control is another important function of legislature. It plays vital role to pass the annual budget prepared by the executive. Without the approval of legislature, the executive cannot impose tax and spend budget. Due to its control in over financial affairs, people can suppose to have their control in the state's revenue. Therefore, the legislature maintains financial control as the representatives of people. Amendment of the Constitution There is provision of amendment of the Constitution in most of the countries in the world. In the Constitution of Nepal, two-thirds of the majority of the legislature can amend the constitutions. State Legislature The legislature which is formed in each state is known as Provincial Legislature. The Constitution of Nepal has mentioned its provision in Part 14, Article Number 175 to 196. 
According to the present constitution, there shall be a unicameral legislature in a state which shall be called the State Assembly. Every State Assembly will be formed with the following number of members. Members equal to number of members to be elected through the FPTP election system to the House of Representatives from the concerned province. The number of members of the elected through the proportional representation PR election system is the number equivalent to the remaining 40% where the number of members mentioned above is regarded as 60%. Unless dissolved earlier pursuant to this constitution, the term of the state assembly shall be of five years. The provincial select a speaker and a deputy speaker to conduct the meeting of the assembly. Unit 5. Civic Consciousness Lesson 2. The Federal Executive The executive implements the law. It is also known as the Government of Council of Ministers. The executive power of Nepal shall be vested in the Council of Ministers. There are federal executive in the center, state executive in the state and local executive body in local level. In the constitution of Nepal, the parliamentary party leader of the political party with majority in the federal legislature shall be the prime minister. A council of ministers shall be formed in his or her chairpersonship. The Council of Ministers is formed by the President of the Recommendation of the Prime Minister according to the principles of inclusiveness. The member of minister shall be 25 in maximum. The functions of the executive. Administrative function. Implementing laws passed by the legislature is the prime function of the executive. The success of executive depends on maintenance of peace, law and order in the nation. Besides this, it makes plans and policies for economic growth, runs administration, controls and directs other bodies of the executive. It conducts various activities through bureaucracy from the highest to the lowest level so as to maintain peace and order in the nation. Diplomatic function Diplomatic function means the conduct of foreign relations. The executive determines foreign policy, expands foreign relations, appoints diplomatic representatives to foreign states and receives representatives from them. It also negotiates international treaties and conventions, though the approval is the subject of parliament. Financial function the finance minister introduces estimated budget of income and expenditure in the parliament. The execution determines rate of tax, collects tax and uses revenue for running the nation. It can also lend loan to other countries and borrow from them with the consent of parliament. A country's all activities are conducted by economy. Therefore, management and distribution of budget for smooth administration is considered as important function of the executive. Military function Military function is defined as defense of the state and its citizens and prosecution of war against another state. According to the constitution of Nepal, the government of Nepal prepares defense strategy, policy related to protection of citizens and protection of national interests. In the constitution of Nepal, there is a provision of National Defense Council in the chairmanship of Prime Minister to recommend the government of Nepal for mobilizing and controlling the Nepal army. The function of the executive is to protect the country from foreign attack. In most of the countries, declaration of war and proposal of peace is also done by the executives. Likewise, the government of Nepal can also mobilize the Nepal army for disaster management, construction and development works. The president can appoint and terminate the tenure of chief of the army staff, COAS. In the recommendation of the Council of Ministers, he or she also declares mobilization of Nepali army when recommended by the Defence Council according to the decision of Government of Nepal. Every state shall have state government in Nepal. The executive issues general directives, controls and regulates the administration of state. Every state shall have chief minister as the head of state executive. The State Council of Ministers is constituted among the members of the State Assembly not exceeding more than 20% of total members. The local executive power shall be vested in the village executive or municipal executive. It has the responsibility of issuing general directives controlling and regulating the administration of ruler municipality and municipality according to the Constitution of Nepal. Unit 5 Civic Consciousness Lesson 3 The Judiciary 
The judiciary is one of the most important organs among the three organs of the state. It explains the law, retrospect judicial decision, protects human rights, etc. The judiciary punishes the lawbreakers and serves the guardian of rules of law. The judiciary is the real guard of life of individual, freedom and security in democracy. Assurance of civilization and civilized society is the gift to independent and impartial judiciary. Democracy will not be effective and successful where judiciary is powerless or dependent because judiciary is the soul of any democratic political system of the modern age. The Part 11 of Constitution of Nepal has made provision for judiciary. The power relating to justice in Nepal shall be exercised by courts or other judicial institutions. There are three types of courts in Nepal. They are Supreme Court in center or in the capital city, High Court in each state, District Courts in district. The Supreme Court. It is the apex level of court in judicial hierarchy. It is also the court of record. Unless otherwise provided in the Constitution of Nepal, all other courts and judicial institutions shall be under the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court shall have the final power to interpret the Constitution and law. In addition to the Chief Justice of Nepal, there shall be 20 judges in the maximum in the Supreme Court. The President shall appoint Chief Justice at the recommendation of Constitutional Council and judges of the Supreme Court at the recommendation of Judicial Council. Any person who has worked as a judge of the Supreme Court for at least three years is eligible for appointment as the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. The tenure of office of the Chief Justice shall be six years from the date of appointment. High Court there shall be a high court in every state. In addition to the chief judge, every high court shall have judges in the number as provided in federal law. The chief justice shall, on the recommendation of the judicial council, appoint the chief judge and judges of the high court. The following are the qualifications to be chief judge and judges of the high court. Any Nepali citizen who has a bachelor's degree in law and has worked as a district judge for at least five years or who has practiced as a law graduate senior advocate or advocate for at least 10 years or for at least 10 years has either taught law or conducted research thereon or worked in any field of law or justice or worked in any post of gadgeted first-class officer of the judicial service for a period of at least five years shall be considered eligible for appointment as chief judge or other judges of high court. District Court There shall be a district court in every district. The local level judicial institution shall remain under the district court. The district court may inspect, supervise, and issue necessary instructions to its subordinate judicial institutions. The Chief Justice appoints judges of district courts on the recommendation of the Judicial Council. The Functions of the Judiciary Judiciary is the highly dignified organ of the state. It maintains rule of law. Powerful, strong, and impartial judiciary is the pillar of democracy. The functions of judiciary is presented in your course book. Unit 5. Civic Consciousness Lesson 4. Constitutional Bodies or Organs The Constitution of Nepal, Part 21-26, to has made provision of the constitutional organs. The constitutional bodies or organs are established for helping the various works of government since the legislature. The executive and the judiciary alone cannot run all the works of the state. The following are the main constitutional bodies or organs of the government of Nepal according to the Constitution of Nepal. Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authorities, CIAA. The Constitution of Nepal has made a provision of the Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority in Part 21. If a person holding a public post does corruption or abuses authority, the Commission investigate that person. The Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority shall have a Chief Commissioner and four other Commissioners. The term of office of the Chief Commissioner and other Commissioners shall be of six years from the date of appointment. Auditor General There is a provision of an Auditor General in the Constitution of Nepal in Part 22. The term of office of the Auditor General shall be of six years from the date of appointment. 
the accounts of offices of the president, vice president, the supreme court, the federal legislature, state legislature, state governments, local bodies, and the constitutional body shall be audited by the auditor general. Likewise, the office of the attorney general, the Nepali army, Nepal police or armed police force as well as all the federal and state offices of government of Nepal shall be audited by the auditor general. There shall be consideration given to the regularity, economy, efficiency, effectiveness and propriety while auditing. The Auditor General shall be consulted for carrying out the audit of any corporate body of which the government of Nepal or the state government owns more than 50% of the share and assets. The Auditor General provides guideline about the directives principle of auditing such kinds of corporations. Public Service Commission in the Constitution of Nepal, there is a provision of Public Service Commission in Part 23. It shall be the duty of the Public Service Commission to conduct examination for the selection of most qualified candidates to civil service position and recommends the government of Nepal for their appointment. The appointment of position entitled to pension from Nepal government shall be made by consulting. Public Service Commission shall be consulted concerning the law relating to the conditions of service of the Federal Civil Service. It also provides general principles to be followed in the course of appointment, promotion and departmental action. The Public Service Commission consists of the chairperson and four other members. At least 50% of the total number of members of the Public Service Commission shall be appointed from among the persons who have worked for 20 years or more in any government service and the rest of the members shall be appointed among the persons who have done research or investigation, teaching or any other significant work in fields such as science, technology, art, literature, law, public administration, sociology, or any sphere of nation life and who hold a high reputation. Election Commission The Constitution of Nepal has made a provision of Election Commission of Nepal in Part 24. The Election Commission conducts, supervises, directs, and controls the election process of President, Vice President, the members of Federal Legislature, Provincial Legislature, and local bodies. It is also responsible for preparing the voters' list for the purpose of election. It holds referendum on subject of national importance as per the Constitution and federal laws. National Human Rights Commission The Constitution of Nepal has made a provision of National Human Rights Commission in Part 25. It is the responsibility of National Human Rights Commission to ensure the respect, protection and promotion of human rights and their effective implementation. The Human Rights Commission makes inquiries and investigations into violation or involvement of violation of human rights. After the investigation, it takes departmental actions and to laws a petition in the court. It has also got the responsibility of working jointly in a coordinated manner with civil society to enhance awareness of human rights. It consists of a chairperson and four members. National Natural Resource and Fiscal Commission, NNRFC. The Constitution of Nepal has made provision of Natural Resources and Fiscal Commission in Part 26. In this commission, there shall be five members in maximum including the chairperson. The main function of NNRFC is to prepare the basis to recommend donation or conditional donation provided to the federal, provincial and local level governments. It also provides suggestion for generating revenue. It makes recommendations about coordination and mitigating of disputes likely to arise regarding distribution of national resources between federal and state, between states, between a state and local level entities. All the authorities of the constitutional organs are appointed by the President on the recommendation of Constitutional Council. They should be at least 45 years. They should not be a member of any political party. And they should possess high moral character to be appointed in the constitutional bodies or organs of Nepal. The term of office shall be of six years from the date of appointment. However, 
If they submit written resignation to the president, if they attend the age of 65, if a motion of impeachment is passed against them, if they become unable to work due to physical and mental problem, if they die and if the president terminates them on the recommendation of Constitutional Council, the post of these authorities shall be vacant. Unit 5. Civic Consciousness Lesson 5. Other Constitutional Commissions the Constitution of Nepal has made provision of seven commissions in Part 27. They are National Woman Commission, National Dalit Commission, National Inclusion Commission, Adibasi Janajati Commission, Madesi Commission and Tharu Commission. The authorities of these commissions shall be appointed by the President on the recommendation of the Constitutional Council. There is a brief explanation of these commissions below. National Woman Commission The Constitution of Nepal has made a provision of the National Woman Commission in Article 252. It formulates policies and programs regarding women welfare, reviews if the international convention signed by Nepal has been executed, and recommends for effective implementation of them. It also carries out research and studies regarding gender equality, woman empowerment, other legal provisions concerning women, and to forward a recommendation to the concerned bodies regarding the areas to be amended in those law and to monitor the same. It is also the function of National Woman Commission to lodge a petition in the court to the victims of woman violence and social malpractice. There is provision of a chairperson and four members in the National Women's Commission. National Dalit Commission The Constitution of Nepal has made a provision of National Dalit Commission in the Article 255. It takes initiation to promote Dalit community and tries to end suppression and discrimination. It also formulates suitable policies and programs related to Dalit and recommends the government of Nepal for implementation. It also monitors and reviews the policies and programs implemented by the state to bring Dalit Commission into mainstream of development. National Dalit Commission consists of the chairperson and four members. National Inclusion Commission the Constitution of Nepal has made a provision of National Inclusion Commission in Article 258. Its main function is to protect the rights of Khasarya, backwarded class, persons with disability, senior citizens, laborers, peasants, marginalized and minority community, people of Karnali reason and economically disadvantaged people. It carries out research studies on the communities referred to above formulates policy of inclusiveness, studies the condition of implementation and suggests for improvement. The appointment of chairperson and members of National Inclusion Commission shall be done by the President on the recommendation of Constitutional Council. There is a provision of a chairperson and four other members in the Constitution. Indigenous Nationalities Commission the Constitution of Nepal 2072 has made a provision of Indigenous Nationalities Commission in Article 261. The Commission makes policies related to Adibasi Janajati. It is also concerned with the protection and empowerment of the Adibasi Janajati. There shall be a chairperson with four members in this Commission. Madesi Commission The Constitution of Nepal Article 262 has made a provision of Madesi Commission. It consists of a chairperson and four members. The appointment of chairperson and members of Madesi Commission shall be done by the President on the recommendation of the Constitutional Council. The term of office of the authority shall be of six years from the date of appointment. Tharu Commission The Constitution of Nepal has made a provision of Tharu Commission in Article 263. The Tharu Commission makes policies for the empowerment of Tharu community for the protection of their rights. It consists of chairperson and four other members. Muslim Commission The Constitution of Nepal has similarly made a provision of Muslim Commission in the Article 264. Muslim Commission consists of the chairperson and as many as four other members. It provides suggestion to the government of Nepal from study and research on policies and programs related to the promotion and empowerment of Muslims' rights and interests. Unit 5. Civic Consciousness Lesson 6. Political Parties Political parties have a crucial role to play in the democratic nation for good governance. 
They're founded in political ideologies, principles, philosophies and programs in a competitive political system. Political parties derive mandate to govern or rule the nation by winning the hearts of people through their thoughts, programs and behaviors or works. There is also a provision of political parties in the constitution of Nepal. They should submit manifesto of the party at the time of registration of political party to the election commission. The manifesto as per the constitution of Nepal should be democratic. The election of office bearers must be done every five years. Likewise, there should be a provision of proportional participation so as to reflect the diversity of Nepal in the executive committees at various levels of the party. But, no political party shall be registered if its name, objective, symbol and flag is of a character hurts the country's religious or communal unity. Political parties should get validity for the purpose of election from election commission. The political party should register the application by meeting the conditions set by election commission to get validity for contesting election. While registering application, they should submit documents relating to manifesto of the party, annual auditing report and other details as given below. Name of political party and address of its headquarter, working committees of similar types of other committees, members and other office bearers, name and address, income source of political party and ways to get that income. Role of the political parties to bring democracy Political parties have played a decisive role for the establishment of democracy in Nepal. The Praja Parishad, the Nepali Congress and the Nepal Communist Party had played a great role to establish democracy. They contested the parliamentary election of 2015 BS aiming the institutionalized democracy, but political parties were banned on 22nd Pauls 2017 BS. Then King Mahindra introduced partyless panchayat system by dissolving the parliament. The political parties kept protesting against such undemocratic move to get back civic freedom and democracy for about decades. As a result of the joint mass movement, Multi-party system was restored in 2046 BS. The Nepali Congress and the United Left Front steered the joint mass movement. It played vital role in the movement. They contested parliamentary election in 2048, 2051 and 2056 BS. It added more contribution to institutionalized democracy. The mass movement second was called on 2062 to 2063 jointly by the Seven Political Party Alliance and the CPN Maoist Community Party of Nepal. It got back to the lost rights of people and provided the opportunity to be the owner of sovereignty and political power. The establishment of peace was possible with the agreement of seven political parties and the CPN Maoist. The first constituent assembly election was successfully held on 28 Chaitra 2064. But, unfortunately, it could not deliver constitution. The government of Nepal held another round of election to constituent assembly on 4th Mangsir 2070. The constitution assembly was successful to promulgate the constitution after a long discussion on 3rd Asos 2072. In the way, the establishment of Federal Republic Nepal, institutionalization of democracy, securing of peace process and promulgating constitution through the Constituent Assembly, all became possible by the political party's collective efforts. Unit 5. Civic Consciousness Lesson 7. Election Process Election is a democratic process of choosing representatives by casting votes. Election is a must to elect representatives of federal legislature, state legislature and local bodies. In Nepal, election commission holds election of the president, vice president, representatives of federal legislature, state legislature and local bodies. Election commission also prepares voters list for the purpose of election. Election officer is responsible for accomplishing election in electoral constituency. Likewise, Polling officers are given responsibility of arranging voting at polling centers. Polling officer is also responsible for managing polling center, arranging security, initiating and concluding voting as per rule. Similarly, if need be, they can postpone. Election offices look into the complaints made by public regarding election and submit ballot paper to concerned place. 
Polling officers have the responsibility of counting votes of local level if required. Voters list Election Commission updates voters list to ensure the voting right of Nepali citizen of 18 years at least. The Election Commission enters the name of missed voters in voters list every year. It removes name of the dead, migrated and those who have left the electoral constituency after marriage. It updates the name of those who have come to settle by marriage. Nobody can be the candidate in election if they don't have their name in voters list. Voters identity card. Voters identity card is a must to cast a vote. In voters identity card, there will be voters name, address, identity card number and photo. Polling center. Polling centers are chosen as per voters' convenience to that place. One or more than one polling centers can be arranged according to the voters' number. Generally, polling centers are arranged in schools and public places for convenience of space. Candidates and his or her qualifications. There is law of age limit to be a candidate of any election. The candidate must meet fixed age or qualification to be the candidate in election. The following are the provisions of age limit for the following posts. President or Vice President of the age of 45. Member of Federal Legislature of the age of 25 for the House of Representatives and 35 years for the National Assembly. Member of State Legislature of the age of 25 at least. Head of Village Executive, Deputy Head of Village Executive or Members and Mayor of Municipal Executive, Deputy Mayor or Member of the age of 21. Member of Village or Municipal Assembly attend the age of 21. Qualifications to be the Member of Federal Legislature. Citizen of Nepal who has not been punished for any criminal offence or involved in moral torpitude, not ineligible under any law, not holding an office of profit. Unit 5. Civic Consciousness. Lesson 8. Role of Citizens in Elections. Citizens can play a crucial role to make elections successful, disciplined and decisive. Election cannot be successful without getting support from the people and without getting their votes. The role of citizens in election process is crucial in all the phases of election. The Election Commission Act of Nepal 2063 divides the election into three phases. There are pre-election phase. In the context of our country, the phase means the period before declaration of the date of election. Generally, this phase starts 120 days before the date of election. In this phase, following tasks are done. Bring election law or act, organizational reforms, development of the capacity of manpower and organizations. During election phase, according to the Election Commission Act of Nepal 2063, Article 2 states that the election period starts from 120 days before the date of election and ends after declaration of the results of the election. Following tasks are done in this phase. Arrangement of the necessary tools for the election, estimation of the manpower for the election, trainings, printing of ballot papers, sending ballot papers to the poll centers, voting, vote counting and declaration of results also come in this phase. Post-election phase. This phase starts after the declaration of the final result of the election. Following tasks are done after this phase. Evaluation of the election. Preparation of report. Receive report from the monitoring organizations. Preparation of the plans to remove the weakness of the election. Preparation of the strategic plan. The role of people in these phases is very important. They can participate in the election in various ways. They should check their name in the electoral roll, voters list. They should discuss the election law and its provisions. They should observe the activities of the political parties and judge them. They should decide to cast the vote to the right candidate and right party. They should stay calm at the time of election and line up to cast their vote. After declaration of the result, they should not be overexcited at the victory of their favorite candidate. And they should not be depressed if their supporting candidate lose the election. They can play a vital role for the institutionalization of the democratic system by accepting the people's verdict. We are not only casting our votes during election. We are giving the lock and key of the nation to someone. So, we should choose the right candidate. Unit 5. Civic Consciousness. 
Lesson 9 Human Rights and National and International Agencies Today, our teacher Sabita provided learning opportunity by using a new method of teaching. First of all, she divided the class into three groups. Then she asked each group to discuss and interact on various subjects about human rights. She also provided newspaper reference materials and source materials to manage self-study and discussion. The conclusion of the group discussion is as follows. Concept of human right and its evolution process. Human rights are rights inherent to all human beings, regardless of nationality, place of residence, sex, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, language or any other status. This definition has been presented by international law. Human right includes the behavior of no discrimination among any human race, language, religion, gender, differently abled, nationality, social and economic condition and other different aspects of human life. Eleanor Roosevelt forwarded the concept of human right for the first time. She was the wife of then-President Franklin Roosevelt of the USA. She took initiative for the Universal Declaration of Human Rights from the General Assembly of the United Nations. The General Assembly of the United Nations approved the Universal Declaration and issued it. The Difference Between Human Rights and Fundamental Rights Human right is a broad concept whereas fundamental right is a narrower concept than that. There are limited rights under fundamental rights. Human rights fall under international law whereas fundamental rights are provided by the constitution of the country. Fundamental rights are also known as civil rights. Constitutional rights and basic rights. Human rights are the same in all the countries but fundamental rights can differ from country to country. Main articles as mentioned in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The General Assembly of the United Nations approved the Universal Declaration of Human Rights on 10 December 1948. The following are the rights as mentioned in the Universal Declaration. Article 1. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Article 2. Everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration, without distinction at any kind of such as race, color, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth or other status. Furthermore, no distinction shall be made on the basis of political, jurisdictional or international status of a country or territory to which a person belongs, whether it be independent, trust, non-self-governing or under any other limitation of sovereignty. Article 3. Everyone has the right to life, liberty and security of person. Article 4. No one shall be held in slavery or servitude. Slavery and the slave trade shall be prohibited in all their forms. Article 5. No one shall be subjected to torture or to cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. Article 6. Everyone has the right to recognition everywhere as a person before law. Article 7. All are equal before the law and are entitled without any discrimination to equal protection of the law. All are entitled to equal protection against any discrimination and violation of this declaration and against any incitement to such discrimination. Article 8. Everyone has the rights to effective remedy by the competent national tribunal for acts violating the fundamental rights granted him by the constitution or by law. Article 9. No one shall subject the arbitrary, arrest, detention or exile. Article 10. Everyone is entitled in full equality to a fair and public hearing by an independent and impartial tribunal. In the determination of his rights and obligations and any criminal charge against him. Article 11. Number 1. Everyone charged with a penal offence has the right to be presumed innocent until proved guilty according to law in a public trial at which he has had all the guarantees necessary for his defence. Number 2. No one shall be held guilty of any penal offence on account of any act or omission which did not constitute a penal offence under national or international law at the time when it was committed. 
nor shall a heavier penalty be imposed than the one that was applicable at the time the penal offence was committed. Article 12. No one shall be subjected to arbitrary interference with his privacy, family, home or correspondence, nor to attack upon his honour and reputation. Everyone has the right to the protection of the law against such interference or attack. Article 13. Number 1. Everyone has the right to freedom of movement and residence within the borders of each state. Number 2. Everyone has the right to leave any country, including his own, and to return his country. Article 14. Number 1. Everyone has the right to ask and to enjoy in other countries asylum for persecution. Number 2. This may not be evoked in the case of persecution genuinely arising from non-political crimes or from acts contrary to the purpose and principles of the United Nations. Article 15. Number 1. Everyone has the right to a nationality. Number 2. No one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his nationality or denied the right to change his nationality. Article 16. Number 1. Men and women of full age without any limitation due to race, nationality or religion have the right to marry and to be found a family. They are entitled to equal rights as to marriage, during marriage and its dissolution. Number 2. Marriage shall be entered into only with the free and full consent of the intended spouse. Number 3. The family is a natural and fundamental group unit of society and is entitled to protection by society and the state. Article 17. Number 1. Everyone has the right to own property alone as well as in association with others. Number 2. No one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his property. Article 18. Everyone has the rights to freedom of thoughts, conscience and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom, either alone or in community with others and in public or private, to manifest his religion or belief in preaching, practice, worship and observance. Article 19. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive and impart information, ideas through and media and regardless of frontiers. Article 20. Number 1. Everyone has the right to freedom of peaceful assembly and association. Number 2. No one may be compelled to belong to an association. Article 21. Number 1. Everyone has the right to take part in the government of his country directly or through freely chosen representatives. Number 2. Everyone has the right to equal access to public service in his country. Number 3. The will of the people shall be a basic of the authority of government. This will shall be expressed in periodic and genuine election which shall be by universal and equal suffrage and shall be held by sacred vote or by equivalent free voting or be equivalent free voting procedures. Article 22. Everyone as a member of society has the right to social security and is entitled to realization through national effort and international cooperation and in accordance with the organization and resources of each state of the economic, social and cultural rights indispensable for the dignity and free development of his personality. Article 23. Number 1. Everyone has the right to work, to free choice of enjoyment, to just and favorable condition of work, and to protection against unemployment. Number 2. Everyone without any discrimination has the right to equal pay for equal work. Number 3. Everyone who works has the right to just and favorable remuneration insurance for himself or herself and his or her family and existence worthy of human dignity and supplemented, if necessary, protection. Article 24. Everyone has the right to rest and leisure, including reasonable limitation of working hours and periodic holidays with pay. Article 25. Number 1. Everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of himself or herself and of his or her family, including food, clothing, housing and medical care and necessary social service and the right to security in the events of unemployment, sickness, disability, widowhood, old age or other lack of livelihood in circumstances beyond his control. 
Number two, motherhood and childhood are entitled to special care and assistance. All children, whether born in or out of wedlock, shall enjoy the same social protection. Article 26. Everyone has the right to education. Education shall be free at least in the elementary and fundamental stages. Elementary education shall be compulsory. The technical and professional education shall be made general available and higher education be equally accessible to all on the basis of merit. Article 27. Everyone has the right to participate freely in the cultural life of the community, to enjoy the arts and to share in scientific advancement and its benefits. Article 28. Everyone is entitled to a social and international order in which the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration can be fully realized. Article 29. Everyone has duties to the community in which free and full development of his personality is possible. Article 30. Nothing in this declaration may be interpreted as implying for any state, group of person, any right to engage in any activity or to perform any act aimed to the destruction of any of the rights and freedoms set forth herein. After the presentation of all the groups, Sabita Madam stated following gist of the Universal Human Rights Declaration. Everyone is born free and equal. No one shall be discriminated based on caste, religion, language, etc. Everyone has the right to life and to live in freedom and safety. Nobody should be punished or behaved in inhuman way unnecessarily. We are all equal before the law. Everyone should be respected. No unfair detainment, exile or interment to anybody. All citizens shall have right to speech and right to movement freely. Male and female shall have the right to spend marriage life as they wish for. Everyone has the right to use his or her property. Everyone can participate in his or her cultural and religious activities. Every citizen can make utilization of service provided by his or her state. Everyone is free to peaceful assembly and expression of views and opinions. Everyone is entitled to use social service freely. Role of national and international agencies in the protection of human rights. Many national and international agencies are working effectively in human rights protection in Nepal. These agencies are involved in exerting pressure on government in violation of human rights, raising awareness and advocating values and assumptions of human rights. The rules of national and international organization in relation to human rights protection and promotion have been presented below. Number 1. National Human Rights Commission The National Human Rights Commission is a constitutional body of Nepal. It was established in 2057 BS. The National Human Rights Commission has been working in relation to human rights. Dignity for everyone, equality and justice is the main slogan of this organization. Number 2. Informal Sector Service Center INSEC Informal Sector Service Center was founded in 1988 BS. It has also been working for protection of human rights and fundamental rights in Nepal. It was founded so as to protect human rights of people involved in informal sectors. It has also been publishing Human Rights of the Year book every year. Number 3. Amnesty International Amnesty International is an international organization which is involved in human rights sector. It was founded in 1961 AD in London of the United Kingdom. It has been continuously working to prevent violation of human rights and to provide justice to the people who are deprived of human rights. This organization was awarded Nobel Peace Prize for its campaign against torture in 1977 and United Nations Prize in the field of human rights in 1970. 78. Unit 5. Civic Consciousness. Lesson 10. Rights related to women rights and Adibasi Janjati. Indigenous nationalities. Women cover more than 50% of population of our country. Women empowerment is impossible without ensuring women rights. Therefore, to ensure women rights, following provisions have been made in the constitution, law and policy making level of Nepal. Number 1. Develop equitable society based on the principle of proportional, inclusive and participatory approach. Number 2. Eliminating gender discrimination. Number 3. Provision of citizenship by mother's name. Number 4. 
No one shall be discriminated in general use of law regardless of religion, color, caste, gender, disability, etc. Number 5. There shall be special provision for socially and culturally backwarded women, protection of disabled citizens, empowerment and development of them according to law. Number 6. Women shall be provided equal hereditary rights without discrimination. Number 7. Women shall be provided right to safe maternity and right to pregnancy. Number 8. Women shall not be exploited physically, mentally, sexually, psychologically or any other kinds of violence based on religion, cultural tradition or any other reason and such action shall be punished and victims shall be compensated. Number 9. Every sector of the state shall have women's representation based on the principle of inclusiveness. Number 10. Women shall be provided special opportunity based on positive discrimination in education, health, employment and social security. Number 11. The married couple shall have equal right in property and family affair. Number 12. The constitution has made the provision of National Women Commission. Number 13. Socially backwarded women shall have the right of social justice to get equal representation in every sector of the state based on the principle of inclusiveness. Number 14. Economically poor, weak and helpless single women shall have the right to social security. Number 15. The political objectives of nation shall be to ensure fundamental rights, values and assumptions of human rights and gender equality. Rights related to Adibasi Janzati, the indigenous nationalities. Nepal is a multilingual and multicultural country. 125 caste and ethnic groups live here. Among them, 59 castes are included in the list of Adibasi Janazati. Adibasi and Janajati are backwarded in the vision of development. Therefore, for the empowerment and development of their lifestyle, they should get access to education, communication, health and natural resources. The main issue of Adibasi Janajati is to get elementary level of education in their mother tongue. Adibasi Janajati can be understood or caste or community having their own mother tongue, traditions, cultural identity, social structure, and written or non-written history. This fact has been mentioned in the Article 2 of Chapter 1 of National Foundation for Upliftment of Adibasi Janajati. Education and Other Rights of Adibasi Janajati Number 1. Rights to get elementary education for free and compulsorily. Number 2. Right to get child-friendly education in school. Number 3. Right to conservation of language, fund and civilization. Number 4. Right to easy access to natural resources and material of their own reason. Number 5. Right to get elementary education in mother tongue. Number 6. Right to provision of special facility up to a higher level. Number 7. Right to special facility in state providing services, residence and employment. Number 8. Right to strong participation and inclusive representation in different organs of the state. Efforts made by the state to institutionalize the rights related to Adibasi Janajati. Number 1. Establishment of Adibasi Janajati Commission. Number 2. Provision of elementary education in mother tongue. Number 3. Acceptance of principle of participatory approach for equal access and opportunity in different organs of or sectors of the state. Number 4. Management of curriculum, textbook, teaching materials and teacher to provide education in mother tongue. And Number 5. Provision of scholarship. Unit 5. Civic Consciousness. Lesson 11. Identity of Citizen and Citizenship. Citizenship is a legal document given by a state to its citizen to identify them as the citizen. Citizenship is valid base of identification. Citizenship and nationality are different things. The relation of citizenship may break but the relation of nationality does not. There are two ways to get citizenship. The first way is to get citizenship by descent. It is also called bloodline relation based citizen. The next way is a citizenship by virtue of birth. It is also known as soil or land relation based citizenship. Differences between nationality and citizenship. We receive citizenship for living in a country but nationality remains even if we live in abroad. We can abandon or renounce citizenship by nationality is permanent which cannot be renounced. 
Citizenship is a narrow concept whereas nationality is broad. Citizenship is relationship between state and law whereas nationality is relationship of emotional feelings. Citizenship holds personal assumptions whereas nationality holds collective or group assumptions. Provision related with citizenship. There are various provisions related to citizenship. The provision of citizenship by birth means the condition of getting citizenship in relation to land where a person was born. Likewise, citizenship by descent or bloodline refers to the condition of getting citizenship based on the blood relation or descent with father and mother. Some countries have made a provision of dual citizenship. The condition of being citizenshipless is also another part related to citizenship. Some countries provide honorary citizenship to dignified persons. Some countries provide identity of citizen as second class. In that condition, an individual can be deprived of rights and services provided by the state. Citizenship related provisions in the Constitution of Nepal. There is a provision of single federal citizenship with state identity in Nepal. Every Nepali citizen has the right to acquire citizenship. The present constitution of Nepal has the following basis of acquiring citizenship. Citizenship of descent. According to the constitution of Nepal, the following are the basis to acquire citizenship by descent. Number 1. A person whose father and mother was a citizen of Nepal at the birth, such a person can get citizenship of descent category. Number 2. A child of a citizen with citizenship of Nepal by birth before the commencement of this constitution shall, if or his or her father and mother both are the citizen of Nepal, shall be entitled to Nepali citizenship upon his or her attaining the age of majority. Number 3. Every child found in Nepal whereabouts of whose paternity and maternity is not known shall, until the mother or father is traced by deemed a citizen of Nepal by descent. Number 4. A person born to a Nepali citizen mother and having his or her domicile in Nepal but whose father is not traced shall be conferred the Nepali citizenship of descent. Naturalized citizenship. The following are the criteria or requirements to acquire naturalized citizenship according to the Constitution of Nepal. Number 1. A baby born to a Nepali citizen woman in Nepal and having his or her domicile in Nepal but father's citizenship is a foreign, such person acquires naturalized citizenship. Number 2. If a foreign woman married to a Nepali citizen so wishes, she may acquire naturalized citizenship. Number 3. In case of a person born to Nepali woman citizen married to a foreign citizen, he or she may acquire naturalized citizenship of Nepal if he or she is having the permanent domicile in Nepal and he or she has not acquired citizen of foreign country. Honorary Citizenship According to the Constitution of Nepal 2072, the government of Nepal can confer honorary citizenship to any foreign citizen who has contributed in Nepal's welfare, dignity and promotion of Nepal's value and assumptions. The government of Nepal has granted honorary citizenship to Dr. Tony Hagen and Sir Edmund Hillary. Non-Residential Citizenship the person who has acquired citizenship of a foreign country and is residing in a country other than the country which is a member of a South Asian Association of Regional Cooperation, SAARC, and who or whose father or mother, grandfather or grandmother was a citizen of Nepal by descent or birth and later on has acquired citizenship of the foreign country can be conferred with the non-residential citizenship of Nepal. Though such citizens do not get all rights as equal to other citizens, they will get economic, social and cultural rights.